So we're here with the Tech Nexion uh, here at the Computex 2018. And hi. Hi, uh, Nicolas. Uh, welcome to visit us. Um, maybe you take a look here. Uh, this is the Android Things uh, development uh, kit. So this uh, is a new kit? Uh, actually, this is the kit that uh, we have been promoting together with uh, Google. And uh, it is the uh, official starter kit for Android Things. And Google gave them away at Google I.O. a couple months ago. And uh, um, how, many yeah. how many people, Every, everybody at Google I.O. got one, right? Uh, yeah, so uh, Google say there are around seven, 8,000 people joining in uh, Google I.O. So um, uh, they all bought one home. It's a nice uh, carton, carton, uh, a box uh, setup. And what's this uh, connectors and stuff that's here? Uh, so it's actually it's a camera here. Um, so you can see yourself. Not that anyone is interested to see you, but here, yeah. see, there you are, man. You yeah. need to shave. Yeah. And uh, a touch panel, of course, and uh, Wi-Fi, and here some LEDs and, and some uh, but buttons uh, just for development. So how's it going with the Android Things ecosystem? And you, you're like powering all the dev kit, most of the, the dev kits out there, right? Uh, yeah, so uh, now the preferred uh, dev kit is the iMac 7. And uh, the iMac 8 is uh, joining uh, Android Things as well. So I have here the Android Things uh, iMac 8 M uh, Pico module. And so you see, uh, let me, the 8M SOC with the low power DDR4, the EMMC on the rear, and a Qualcomm QCA 9377 Worldwide Certified Wi-Fi uh, solution. So this is um, a special Wi-Fi solution? Uh, yes. Um, so first of all, um, to finish up the Android things, the Pico iMac 7 and the Pico iMac 8M, they are pin to pin which means that they are using the same three connectors on the bottom of the PCB. What does the three connectors do? Uh, these are bringing all the uh, I.O., the, the interfaces, to the carrier board, the baseboard. So it is carrying the camera signals, the display signals, but also GPIOs and PWMs uh, to uh, the carrier board. So customers can uh, use a simple four-layer PCB, put this on there, have their IoT uh, sensors uh, there, and they are ready with their Android Things. They can use the Android Things software, build their application, and they have their IoT device working with um, Google uh, Android Things. So uh, if maybe we can just jump quickly over here. You have some of demo right here with all the... Uh, with all those uh, uh, Pico, which is your kind of standard, right? Yeah, so Pico modules, here you see many generations. Uh, they are all pin-to-pin -pin compatible. Uh, here you see an overview. We have the iMac 6, uh, which is the previous generation. The iMac 6 UL, which is very low cost. And um, iMac 7, and now also iMac 8. Is this the best way to do IoT, this Pico? Or? Uh, they are optimized for low power mobile uh, applications, yeah, so they are very suitable for IoT. Uh, but Cortex A class IoT, not just uh, microcontroller stuff. No, this not is the sensor stuff. side. Not the sensor side. The sensor side you will do with an, uh, a Cortex M4, a Cortex M7, or, or the like. Uh, this is uh, 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 not on the sensor side, more on the on the client interface side, where you need some more uh, processing power, where you need smart uh, devices. So smart devices can be a thermostat, can be a smart speaker, can be a smoke alarm that you want to do with sound control. Uh, it can be um, an intelligent uh, sensor, kitchen equipment. Um, there are many, many fields so, in IoT. Some of the drawings you have here, uh yeah, so this... And the uh, swimming pool, what would be in the swimming pool with your... Like the sensor, the, the whole smart home? Uh, yeah, this is just a smart home application. Um, so uh, we just want to uh, stress that IoT is everywhere. Uh, so that it is from the bus stop to do uh, uh, information to passengers, 
but also license plate reading for um, for um, billing customers for how many miles they drive. Um, smart home applications, I think everyone knows, smart light, access control, CCTV cameras, uh, controlling your audio system. But we also have IoT in the factory, in the industrial world. And this is the big market that have to enable and drive IoT. We want smart factories. Why we want smart factories? Not because people don't need a job. We want to make factories smarter and safer for the people to work in. So, IoT can help us. So IoT what is she can doing with the IoT there. This is like a vending machine. No, she is using her smartphone. Um, probably she got a message that something was wrong with the devices, and she uh, she was maybe doing something else, and her attention was drawn to. Um, to this uh, device to take action. But you can do scanning of the devices, like this is maybe a warehouse guy or a FedEx guy. So, but even sim simple applications like the guy that is washing the windows outside, he might have uh, sensors that he is strapped on the, on the lift to, if he is not strapped, that the lift will not work, like an, a safety precaution. And, there are many things or that his IoT application can, can uh, open the blinds on the window so that he can clean the windows uh, you for have safety. Do you things happening now? We have people working on this, yes. And all these drawings, these concepts, is real? Yes. So is we have... Just fiction? Is it not just a dream for the future? No, uh, dreaming is what I did when I went to school. Um, these are real-world applications, people that really want to solve uh, problems and want to make the world a safer place for all of us. Is this the smart Paris? Uh, yeah, this is the Eiffel Tower, it's very skinny. Um, um, so, uh, yeah, this is just a vending that you use your smartphone to, to buy products and the vending machines then being linked up to uh, the cloud so that um, the company that owns the vending machine knows we are out of Coca-Cola, so we will send a truck there to refill the Coca-Cola. Is this space? Uh, no. No, this is not space. This is another factory. And uh, so there's another factory automation? So this, this is a factory application where the other one was more an office application. And here the last step is uh, agriculture, so farming applications. Um, there's a lot of IoT going on there um, from things uh, for the uh, uh, machines, but also uh, IoT with animals to know how much uh, food they eat on a daily intake, um, when they um, are uh, fertile to, to get uh, babies so that you know I need to get the male candidate with the females to to reproduce, uh, so that is all uh, farming. So and the are in the farming now. We have a lot of customers in agriculture. Yes, nice. correct. Oh, yeah. Sorry, let me jump right back here. And this this is uh, this farm factor is the, the yeah the so, same that's here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this is more an SPC board, uh, just Raspberry Pi farm factor. So this is as well based on the IMAX 8M, and it. Uh, it comes with, uh, with memory, it comes with uh, Qualcomm, uh, Wi-Fi, and uh, this is a uh, very nice uh, uh, prototype board, very compact. Uh, so that's also your, uh, which, which one do you sell more, the Pico or that one? This is more like develop, developer mode, this is more like uh, industrial finalized, uh, put inside the IoT product? Uh, most of our customers, they go for, for the Pico and look, look them side by side. So, What's it's size. Um, so no, it cannot it? really be compared because here are all the IOs on it. Here is only, say, the brain. So you still need an, a baseboard. But price-wise, they are pretty much the same. Uh, so with the macho, you have more flexibility and uh, you can customize it easier with a baseboard. Here you will need to work with a hat, 
So both ways have their benefits and their disadvantages. Uh, so this is the IMX 8M, the quad core ARM Cortex A53. Yes, is, correct. Uh, at Embedded World, they announced uh, general availability. Yeah, and now it starts shipping. So it's uh, it's now on uh, very short uh, delivery dates. For uh, the One Pi, this is the One Pi um, units actually start shipping last week slowly to developers. Um, so we have an, we have a big. Uh, backlog with uh, uh, pre-orders and people slowly get their uh, their kits as they uh, they are fully QC'd and, uh, and shipping to customers. Uh, so um, there's still some availability uh, constraints there. Uh, we think we will fulfill all the orders within the next four to five weeks. And uh, this is the Pico Macho. Currently it is uh, at Google uh, for um, having this in Android things uh, and uh, products will start shipping to customers also uh, probably uh, beginning of July, maybe the end of June. So how's the uh, uh, Android things performance on IMX 8M compared to IMX 7? It's completely different products. So the IMX 7 has been designed for low power and uh, fanless compact devices, where the 8M is uh, more multimedia. Um, it has a very powerful GPU. It can drive 4K displays. Uh, so the power consumption is, is a little bit higher, but uh, the performance is a magnitude. So compared to the iMac 7. 10 times, maybe. Um, Maybe, maybe more. I, uh, I have to check the, the benchmarks on that. But then, uh, it is a different product for a different market. And then uh, I did a video with NXP at the Better World where they, they, are, they announced the, uh, another one, a new one called the Mini. Yes, the Mini. Uh, so uh, so, uh, this yeah. is 28 nanometer and the next one will be 14 or something. Yes, like that, right? correct. So that is a new process, uh, 8M Mini. We are working with NXP to make a Pico Macho based on the uh, 8M Mini, uh, but that is all in early planning stages. And uh, Availability we, is maybe next, uh, it's not, uh, it was just announced only at Embedded It World, is right? just announced, yes, and uh, <coughs> probably we can, uh, we can show something next year at Embedded World when you come to visit us. So for the Embedded World uh, industry, NXP is providing very stable, long-term support chipsets, right? Yes, correct. Which is great. So or our customers want to have 15 years availability of the products. Uh, that is very important. We have customers that work in automation, as I show at the examples earlier. Um, agriculture, uh, factory automation, even home automation. People don't want to change their house every five years when something breaks down. They want to replace something with the same uh, thing. Also, many companies, they are proud to uh, support uh, products for 15, 20 years in the consumer uh, space. You will not redecorate your house every five years as well, right? You, you want to buy something and then you do your painting, you do everything ready, and you don't want then two years later, if, if it breaks down, very unfortunately, it breaks down. You need to buy a replacement, and then the size is smaller, and you have a black hole in your in your wall. Nobody wants that. So long liberty is very important for uh, for being successful in in the in the IoT uh, world where you are interfacing to the customer. We did a really cool video last year in your in your in your office factory. Yes, and correct. You, you I remember. Uh, you mentioned the, the. I hope you liked the video. But uh, you mentioned uh, when did when did you start the company? We started the company back in 2001, so, so 17 years ago. Already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you already have experience with the 15-year support kind of thing. I'm joking, but it's yeah, more well, than 15 already. Um, uh, we, we started to build ARM uh, CPU modules back in 2008. So 2008 is 10 years ago. Yeah, so you haven't this is still yet. in mass production and will not go EOL until at least 20... 2024-25. So uh, we have uh, contract, uh, contracts signed with customers. We need to uh, supply products up to the end of 2024. Yes. Uh, so there's another six years. It's already in mass production for 10 years. 
So, uh, of all your customers, how many people are using Android? How many people are using other systems? Well, we have uh, different applications, different uh, customers. Because we have Android a lot of customers. Right? Yeah, so Android Things is still still very new. Very, it's like a baby. Uh, so uh, the normal Android, the normal Android, is being used by a lot of people, and. Um, so a, a majority of our uh, customers are using Android and we think a lot of customers will actually like Android things. Um, other customers uh, are spread uh, on Yocto. We have many customers on Yocto as well. Yocto is a very compact uh, platform and you can uh, get by with a lower spec product than an Android. Android really want to have a GPU to show off a multimedia. But for a headless design, for something that is uh, just a control box, people are fine with a headless Linux Yocto distribution. So there's so, no, not so many headless Androids out there? Not many that I'm aware of. People have to be uh, confident in their Android to make it headless. Uh, yeah, so... Usually then, Android, you want to see yeah. what's going and on. And those people that want to go headless, they go for a free Arthos or an, uh, a Yocto. And um, yeah, if we are looking more into systems, like this is a system that we are making, an, a waterproof uh, system here. Uh, so, uh, um, people like to run uh, an OS on this, uh, like a Ubuntu, uh, because it's easy to install packages on it with an uh, apt-get install uh, uh, command. Uh, so, um, different applications, different industries, different operation systems. So, so, so IoT yeah. is a lot about connection, and uh, you're talking about yeah, IoT. Yeah, everything is connection, connection, connection. So what, what's with so, the? Um, let me let me show you. It's very very small, so I hope you guys can see it. Uh, this is only 12 by 16 centimeters, uh, millimeters. Sorry, millimeters. It is an uh, a solder down module here, as you can see. It can be soldered down. This is a Bluetooth plus Wi-Fi combo module. It is, this is a uh, QCA9379 uh, uh, Wi-Fi solution, but let, let me show you here. You have an overview, come follow me. So, we have a 9377, which is a 1x1, 802.11 one one, uh, AC with Bluetooth. And then we have a 2x2, two two, which is 6174, also with Bluetooth 4. And the 9379 is a 2x2 two two with a, a, also with a Bluetooth, a much higher performance than, than the others. And um, just to give you a sneak peek, uh, next year uh, we will come out with Bluetooth 5. So, but connectivity is one thing. We also want to ship around the world. And one big problem that everyone is going to face using Wi-Fi is certification. You need to be certified um, into the countries that you will uh, sell your IoT um, uh, product. So everyone know FCC, USA FCC, but that only covers the US. CE, we all have seen it on, on our uh, products, which is for Europe. But if you sell a Wi-Fi product, a Wi-Fi enabled product, you need to have Etsy for Europe as well. You need to have red certification. You need to have IC certification for Canada. You need to have CTIC RTM for, uh, for Australia and New Zealand. You need Telex certification for Japan. We did all this certification already in our products. So you don't have to recertify. This certification will set you back 100,000 US dollars per product that you will design. If you work with a certified module, you can save this certification cost and you only need to do EMI, EMC testing, which is only a couple thousand US dollars. So when you're building your next IoT platform, Nicholas, and you need to have Wi-Fi, you either need to factor in 100,000 US dollar certification cost or you need to find a certified Wi-Fi solution that can reduce this certification. Are you the only one to do this? Uh, as far as we know, we are the only one that has all the certification. There are some people that have FCC, 
but <coughs> that we know there's nobody that has all the certification. But we have more than this. Just go up a little bit. Operation temperature, minus 40 degrees Celsius, which is also minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit, up to 85 degrees Celsius working temperature. So operating temperature of the products. So very small, very versatile, but very, very handy and already prepared and ready for mass production. Do you have different ones? No, this is the one that's soldered down. Here I have one that is a little bit bigger because people want to um, have an easy prototype. So we have this and voila, there we go. We have a board to board connector here. And if we now walk a little bit to this side again, okay. because there we go. I was talking about our one pie. The same connector, you That's can it. click it in. So if you have applications where you have different needs for Wi-Fi, where you have different requirements, maybe some applications where you don't need to have Wi-Fi, you have an option that you can easily attach or, or detach it onto your product. So you have a differentiation uh, for special markets. How do you attach this one? Well, that one has to be soldered, so you need so, to have so a factory. Yeah, need to have a factory for that. And that that can be uh, that's already on here. Or? Yes, here, yeah, yeah. Side by side, sold it on. Next to it, let me just choo choo choo. So. Um, so our module as well is completely, completely certified with the same certifications that I just mentioned for, um, for our Wi-Fi solution. So it has CE, it has RED, it has FCC, IC for Canada, CTIC for, for Australia, and TELEC for, uh, for Japan. So many markets that you can sell uh, with peace of mind and uh, you have no certification nightmares that set you back a lot of money and will take you six months if you have to do it on your own. And over there in the wall you're showing a little bit more, right? Uh, about this... Uh, is this... Yeah, so this is an, uh, a, proto a prototype board and development board. So it's the same module that I just showed you now assembled on, on a PCB and I think we can we can pull it up. Yeah, we can. It's, it's a Falco. So this is an SD card uh, connector so you can put it into an SD uh, card slot on your on your development board to test drive the Wi-Fi solution. So uh, how is the Wi-Fi performance compared to like a, a laptop or something? Well, the, the Wi-Fi ICs that are uh, used by us are the same ones that are used into Android high-end phones. Uh, so, 2x2, um, 802.11ac, uh, uh, you can uh, reach uh, um, uh, hundreds of Mbps uh, 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 speeds. Uh, so, they are super high-end. So, in the smart home and the smart factory, you can have a whole bunch of Wi-Fi devices. They'll be stable, connected, very stable. Yes, and, and if you have more low-speed I/O that only need to spit some small data, we also have Bluetooth and uh, Thread module. So Thread is uh, is an 802.15.4, uh, um, and here you see the and that one as well. Again, it is certified. So um, we do the certification. Um, worldwide for our products. So what do you do for uh, uh, maybe a LTE or a LoRa? And stuff no, like we, uh, we now, we, our focus is in the office, in the house and the last mile linking up to a telecom is something that uh, we currently don't do. We, we focus on the gateway, the client interface and the sensor part. Have this all in collected the data into the gateway and then the gateway connects with an LTE solution uh, towards the cloud. And uh, um, 
But when you talk about the agriculture with the cows and stuff, you might want to need more range, right? Uh, well, if it is in stables, uh, in the stables, it is you have Wi-Fi. Uh, if you work on on the land, you need to have an uplink that is an LTE uh, link. But people can just use this. Everyone has this, and I can put this in hotspot mode. And my hotspot mode, I can connect it to my tractor. And uh, usually, uh, what's the Wi-Fi limit? How many devices maximum? Is it is it still that kind of 256 kind of devices or something? Well, this is the client side, so um, uh, that's an, another strong point what we can uh, support. Um, the uh, Qualcomm modules that we have, they support client mode, ad hoc mode, access point, hotspot mode, but also concurrent mode. So you can do concurrent mode on the Wi-Fi, which means that you are a client and an access point at the same time, simultaneously. So uh, by doing that, um, you can have it as an access point. So with your phone, for example, you can connect to your IoT device and you can configure it. But once you have it configured, it is a client mode to your access point in your house or in your office to offload the data that it will collect and uh, want to process for uh, cloud and data analytics and big data. It could be useful to have Wi-Fi mesh also, right? Yeah, it's supported. So you can just uh, hop and extend Yeah, the but size if you want to do really, really high performance mesh, you need to go for the access point SOCs from Qualcomm. This is the client mode. So this is the client side, which is the nodes and the access point node uh, side, uh, you're talking about the big gateways. Um, we are working on that, and uh, we are happy to show you that um, uh, at the next event that we will be participating. And uh, uh, at the moment, that is uh, still very much in, uh, in testing and uh, polishing. So uh, on the next show, we can dive into that. What else can you talk about for the next show? We'll for the next, the next show? show. Uh, the next show is in Germany, is um, Electronica in November. Um, so uh, we will be showing off there probably our next generation uh, panel computing. We have a nice lineup now. Um, we are working on the next generation which we want to introduce uh, next year. And uh, uh, that will be 64 bit. Um, so it's not the same. Uh, vertical market will be a, a different market um, so but we are working on the next generation there and also we uh, are working on a product um, for uh, vehicle uh, computing so it's not arm so it's much bigger I, and heavier right? it's, yeah it's heavy so uh, I think if you compare it with an ARM product, this weight is like uh, 20 times. Okay. Uh, so, so what do you have in there? Yeah. So uh, this is an Intel um, Apollo Lake uh, system. I have here the spec card for you. So uh, this is uh, for uh, for vehicles. So you have for power, you have a wide range power input. You have ignition uh, uh, control there. So when you when you uh, press the button in your car to uh, to start your car, or you use your key, um, then you get a signal that it will start uh, this uh, this system. There's two SIM card slots for connecting to two uplinks, and um, this is being used in um, in uh, delivery trucks, but also, for example, in uh, police and medical uh, ambulances. Uh, just uh, for data logging and uh, um, IoT for commercial use. So what does this connect to? Uh, these are serial ports, so you can uh, connect to a serial device. Here's for display. On the other side, uh, you saw some uh, uh, some uh, uh, network connectors, uh, USBs. How long time have you been working on the Intel stuff? We are already doing Intel for more than a decade. Um, we have been working on that in the OEM space mostly. And um, um, we see an, uh, 
a uh, market for Intel-based uh, industrial devices as an extension to our ARM products that, that we have. Uh, they are for different markets. So we have small, small ones, fanless ones, and this is now for rolling stock and, and vehicles. So we do certification for this, but uh, we also do shock vibration testing for this. So uh, even EN50155, we are doing for rolling stock. So a lot of certification uh, for customers that want to use these products. Nice. And uh, lots and lots of boards. That's your company, right? Yeah. Um, these are development boards. So uh, um, a carrier board for our EDM products. And we have been talking about our Pico modules. I have here one and here I have another one. Um, here is a baseboard and we can just nice. click that in. Simple like that. Nice. Yeah. Uh, let's sit over here for one second. Um, maybe uh, just to, f maybe we can finish up the video. Uh, how is it going in the factory? Oh, the factory is good. Since uh, last year, which something um, changed? Not much change on the SMT side, um, but um, we have been uh, nice, nicely busy. Um, also for Android things, the development kits, we, uh, we had to ship uh, many to Google I.O. and many people showing interest in, in, uh, in the Google kits. Um, so uh, uh, it's nice busy uh, at the facility. Um, so uh, uh, your interview last year was 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 very nice. We get uh, a lot of comments from from customers that are happy to see our factory and uh, uh, actually uh, impressed. They impressed, no? I think uh, I thought it was impressive. Uh, yeah, is they that, are impressed, it, and yeah, nice. yeah. So uh, we get many many customers that uh, come to us and they saw your movie and. Uh, they only have problems with uh, number one, your accent, and number two, your your your, accent your, your accent. I think both of us. <laughs> uh, so, uh, um, so, and uh, the, but they like the messiness of your your interview. That you 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 don't follow my rules. You follow your rules. And uh, we uh, last year we did the interview, and you were you were not even asking for what are we going to uh, uh, do in the movie no you just go in and you were out of control you were over over all the machines and you were checking things out and that's nice because people see the real thing and i think people come to you to see your movies because they want to see the real thing and for us we don't care that you see the real thing because we have nothing to hide so uh, we really welcomed uh, that and uh, we actually we, uh, we uh, want you to come back to do an interview uh, and to have a depth interview in the factory. Um, so uh, maybe on your next visit uh, we, can, uh, we can do an, a couple hour um, a movie in, in subsections so people don't go to see it for a couple hours. But maybe we can do like half an hour movies like how do you do reliability testing, how do you do um, stress testing on devices to make your product mass market ready. And uh, um, I think we can we can discuss that uh, with ARM devices, and we can come up with a couple tutorial and learning courses for people uh, that are shot by by you as the real world uh, world explorer, uh, and just uh, uh, educate your 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 visitors to. Uh, to the gems to design and develop a an, an real product. I uh, think so, it's really awesome. And yeah. There was lots of good comments on YouTube. Yes. And uh, but, but are you? I guess since last year, you have new new employees, new R and D. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's actually a funny thing about your movie because um, uh, we actually now uh, when we uh, do a job interview, we just let people first watch the movie before we accept them to come for job interview. Oh. So um, it's, um, uh, it's um, helping a lot because they really understand what we are doing. 
they understand the company, they understand the culture, they understand um, the vision of the company. So it really gives a um, job applicant the, the information that they need to prepare for a good um, a job interview and to have a satisfaction that both parties are happy and don't waste time. So you so, have new, uh, new employees? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Are working in the R&D software stuff? Yeah, we, we hired software? a lot of R&D engineers uh, in the last year. So we added like 20 people in R&D. How about expanding the SMT? You have plans to? Yeah, but um, our factory, uh, we didn't cover this on the movie, but um, they are doing some roadworks outside and our machines have to come in by crane uh, to the eighth floor. And um, that means that um, when the city government rounds up their, their roadworks by the end of the year, uh, we are allowed to close the road by us uh, to get the machines on because there's a busy, a busy road in front of the factory. And uh, half of the road is now construction work for the subway. The other half of the road, nobody is allowed to close for for this kind of uh, activities. But did you say end of the year? So end of the year, they will close the road uh, for uh, because they finished the constructions, and then we can uh, hopefully get the third uh, lineup. So at the moment, we are a little bit struggling. So we are extending our our work shifts and efficiency uh, to. Uh, to uh, satisfy the demand of customers. You have too many customers. I'm Not joking. too many customers, but... but uh, uh, yeah. Big customers. We have uh, nice size yeah. customers, yes. And uh, 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 what I'm guessing also is that maybe it's a good thing to wait because maybe you get the latest Panasonic machines. No, so yeah, uh, Panasonic exactly is still the same. the same generation. Exactly the same. Generation. Exactly the same. Because every so, line has to be safe. Yeah. Uh, when we set up this factory, we did our homework, uh, Nicolas. So uh, we did our homework and we bought the best of the best we can buy. And uh, now the factory is running for three years. And if we need to buy uh, the best of the de best equipment today, it's still the same equipment as we bought three years ago. But so we did. Uh, I didn't discuss the pricing, <laughs> but. Uh, you can buy many nice cars for the money we have to spend to set up uh, one SMT line. It's uh, okay because there's Uber in Taiwan. Yeah, I know. Well, you can buy uh, like uh, 100 Uber cars to own. Uh, that is uh, probably cheaper than an SMT line. Nice. All right. So uh, Good. looking forward to the future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Let's chat about that. Yeah, we're always looking forward to see you. And I, think, uh, I think we should do a director's cut, three hour long video, movie, like, a, like people can watch it, really? can watch it in the cinema. Oh, we can, we can do that and people that watch it, after they watch it, if they still want to talk to me, that means they really want to buy my products, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. so, okay. Mm -hmm. Let,